Welcome to this podcast for Brighton School of Business and Management students studying for the HND Level 5 courses. You are being asked to base your assignment on your own work-based experience, but you should also include, where possible, examples from organisations you perhaps haven't worked for, but have identified through your own research. On to section 1. Bullet point 1 concentrates on recruitment and selection, although the introduction does make reference to retention procedures, so make sure you have included in your assignment uh, how you would approach this subject and perhaps some of the procedures you might put in place to help make sure that good staff are retained once they have been recruited. Bullet point one is quite a wide-ranging question. You might want to look at this uh, first of all in terms of uh, documentation specific to the job in question. So that might include uh, formalising the selection process, formalising where and how you're going to promote the vacancy, uh, who would be involved in the decision making process and, and so on. And this uh, section would also include writing and uh, getting approval of the job description and also the terms of employment. You may also have a range of documentation covering uh, more general uh, topics, not just uh, job specific issues. These could be uh, topics like uh, diversity, uh, policies on discrimination, resolving disputes and perhaps uh, disciplinary procedures. On bullet point two, you need to look at the whole recruitment and selection process, right from drawing up the job description to agreeing employment terms with the successful applicant and look at how the three types of considerations raised in the question uh, could impact on the various stages of the process. Bullet point three is, uh, is your chance to write your own job description. At the beginning of the section you were asked um, how, you would how you would use recruitment, selection and retention procedures. So tell us who you are within the organisation and how you fit into, the, uh, into this particular recruitment project. And the last bullet point where you are asked to evaluate your contribution. Your contribution would depend, I think, largely on who you are within the organisation. If you are a line manager, for example, recruiting somebody for your own department, you'll probably have a different contribution to make than perhaps um, somebody from the human resources department who would be involved in the recruitment decision, but who uh, wouldn't be working with a successful applicant on a day-to-day uh, -day basis. You might want to explore the scope or limits of your, uh, your own contribution. You may feel that you are the only person who needs to be involved in making the decision in this particular scenario or you might feel it important to, uh, to get the input from other people with uh, different skills and uh, different experience. There is some useful information on the ACAS website about the recruitment process which you can find at uh, this web address. Section 2 we are being asked to explore leadership and uh, leadership styles. Bullet point 1 Remember here, as well as explaining what skills and attributes are important, also explain why they are important. On bullet point two, you could explore ideas like are, are good leaders always good managers and vice versa? And does good leadership need the support of good management to be effective? Bullet point three is asking you to look at different leadership styles in different situations. And uh, this phrase, different situations, could, uh, could mean a wide range of things. It could be uh, different types of organisation, large or small, or commercial or, or non-profit, for example. It could also mean different uh, business situations. You could look at how leadership styles might uh, vary between, say, a successful organisation and one that is in, in trouble and uh, needs re-motivating. And here, real-world examples of different leadership styles in action will be very uh, valuable to, to highlight some of the points and illustrate some of the points that you were making. On to uh, the final bullet point about uh, motivating staff. Remember here that there are, uh, first of all, different kinds of objectives in addition to just financial ones. And also that you, uh, you need to consider here that uh, there will be company or corporate objectives, but there will also be personal objectives and uh, development goals of the individual employees to be considered as well. Section 3 is looking at teams and team working. Bullet point 1 is fairly straightforward. Bullet point 2 is a bit more complicated because you have uh, several things to consider here. First of all, uh, looking at 
team working from the perspective of a team leader and how that might uh, differ from the perspective of a team member and of course if, if you were a team member what team role or team roles would you adopt then you could look at difficulties and conflict within a team and conflict resolution and you could perhaps consider these issues from the team leaders and the team members point of view and bear in mind that difficult situations don't all have to revolve around conflict they could arise because of external pressures perhaps uh, financial or market pressures but they may involve the team or the team leader having to make difficult decisions and finally you're being asked to look at the effectiveness of teamwork you might want to consider whether the team approach is always the best way to achieve business goals and the different ways you might measure the effectiveness of teams and also perhaps how you could assess whether the team is working as effectively or as efficiently as it could do. On to section four, which is about assessing and understanding the development needs of the individual. Bullet point one is asking you specifically how you would plan the assessment of workplace performance, but also give some thought to how you would undertake the assessment of those needs, as this is essentially what this unit is about. Then, having looked at how people are performing at work, bullet point two goes on to look at how this performance can be improved or encouraged by looking at the development needs of the people within the organisation. Keep in mind in this section that the emphasis is on how you would go about assessing development needs rather than how you would deliver the training and development, which is covered in other units. The last bullet point is asking you to look at the success of the assessment process and you could look at this from, from both the employer's perspective and also from the employee's point of view. Has the assessment process allowed them to better achieve their own development and lifelong learning objectives? Finally, if you need any further information or guidance with this assignment, please contact your tutor.